Hi all, welcome to this course on PPC. Today we will be learning about uh, Johnson's rule for optimal sequence. So what is Johnson's rule? It's a rule which is used to minimize the make span or which is used to reduce the time period of making the product by following certain amount of process or steps. Following four steps process are used to find the optimal sequence. That is step one. We first find the minimum processing time. Considering the times on both machines, we identify the corresponding jobs in the corresponding machines for the minimum time identified at step one. Then we find out the scheduling rule, which states that if a machine is identified in step two is machine M1, then the job identified in step two will be scheduled in the first available scheduled position. Next is if the machine is identified in step two is machine M2. Then the job identified in step two will be scheduled in the last available scheduled position. Finally, we remove the job from consideration whose position has been fixed in step three and go to step one and continue it again. We do this process until all the jobs have been scheduled. For example, we see with this the following assumptions. Example will be discussed later on. The Johnson's rule are having the following assumptions such as. The same optimal sequence is used on both machines. The preemption is not allowed. That is, once a job is started, it is not interrupted until the final solution is obtained. So, for example, we see that in this iteration one, we have different jobs A, B, C, D, E, whose operation one, two is given A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, C2, D1, D2, and E1, E2. For machine, for operation one is M1 for all. M2 for all, and the time for operation one is eight days, five days, six days, seven days, and four days respectively. The time for operation two is three, seven, nine, six, one, nine, one, six days. So based upon that, we do the first iteration where the minimum time is one, which is for so the job is D and the machine is M2. Hence, the machine is identified at step two is machine M2, or for D, the machine is M2. And job D D will be assigned to the last available state sequence, which is in the position, and the resulting partial sequence is given below. That is position one, two, three, four, and then last one is D. Now we delete job D from the consideration, and we take the next minimum time, which is three, which is three, which is given in the A, or job A, and the machine is M. The job A will be assigned to the last available scheduled position, which is position four. After assigning job A to position four, the partial sequence is given as A and D. One, two, three, A and D. Next, the minimum time is four, which is E, and the machine is M1. So we go with job E, which is assigned. And finally, we find the partial sequence after assigning the job E to position one, which is given below. Now, when we delete this job from consideration, we will be having the next iteration, which is time five. Where the job is B and the <coughs> machine is M1, so the job B will be assigned to the first available schedule position, which is position two. The partial sequence after assigning job B to position two is given below, which gives E B position three A and D. Now, when job B is deleted from consideration, we get the final iteration, which is fifth iteration, where the position C or the only unscheduled job at this stage is C, which will be assigned to the remaining unassigned positions. Three. So the final sequence now is given as E, B, C, N, A, and D, which makes the max span for the sequence will be determined by drawing the graph chart. Thank you.